Look at these aggressive brush marks by Willem de Kooning. Now look at Robert Motherwell and Joan Mitchell. Franz Klein's large line works were predominantly black and white and he often used house paint. He was labeled as an action painter. These artists worked from the 1940s until the early 1960s and their approach to painting emphasized the physical act of painting as an essential part of the finished work. These works were rather large and required broad arm movements as well. The easiest example for understanding action painting is Jackson Pollock, as he was required to move around his canvases as they laid on the floor. Abstract artists are often expressive, such as the work of Vasily Kandinsky. Abstract artists' work can also be non-objective, such as the work of African-American artist Mary Lovelace O'Neill, Mary Abbott, Chinese artist Chin Yi, contemporary artist Shanique Smith, and Indonesian artist Nana Teja. For this activity, let's look at how to develop a composition with expressive marks like Franz Klein. This activity is not a finished work, but is instead a learning opportunity to test and trial ideas, while it's also implementing brush techniques. We will utilize the elements of line, value, and contrast. We will use the cruciform, or L-shaped composition strategy, as a basis to begin our work. This activity should take about 20 minutes to complete. Feel free to pause or rewind as you follow along. Let's get started. Abstract Painting Techniques and Skills Action Painting Action painting is actually easier on larger paper. I am using A3, but if you have A2 available, I'd also suggest that. On our palette, we will need black and white paint. I'm going to be using tempera paint, which is water-based, but you could also follow along if you use acrylic paint instead. Note how I place the paint on my palette. This will allow me to further mix should I decide to do so. I'm also going to be using these larger brushes. I'd suggest one for each color, cutting down on your brush washing while it's painting. Some paper towels nearby may also prove useful. Any brush size is fine, but I'll start with my medium brush and apply some black paint. Note how I apply paint to the brush. I don't scoop it, but drag the brush away from the edge of the pool. I only apply paint halfway up the bristles. Paint thick lines on the paper in a cruciform or L shape. This is a popular abstract composition strategy. I'm going to create mine on an angle, just so it looks a little more dynamic. Take note on how I quickly use the brush painting with my arm and not my wrist. It's better to do this standing over your work rather than seated. Once we have this, feel free to add additional lines to build some variety and interest in your composition. I plan on doing this later. With another brush, fill in the other areas with white paint. As I place the white paint next to the wet black paint, some grays will be made. Take care with this. I'm going to add my additional black lines now, playing with the line weight, or thickness. I'm applying these on the wet white paint, so they will be slightly gray. I'm painting these lines rather quick and loose, so it's more expressive. Feel free to reapply any black and white paint over areas. I go back and forth applying and reapplying black or white to certain areas. As the composition builds, I'm trying to keep balance in mind through tonal variation. I also use the grays to create some variations. If you want something more black, reapply another layer on top. You can try applying additional white, but it most likely will not return to its pure white. I also sometimes turn my work upside down to gain a different perspective. As your work builds, reflect and examine if any further line work is needed or if any re-darkening is required. If you finish this work quickly, feel free to attempt a second one if time permits. What would you do differently? Would the work look better with more line weight or thicker lines? Could shape be incorporated like the work of Robert Motherwell? What would happen if you added color the important thing to remember is to be careful by not overdoing it so that your work turns muddy. It's sometimes hard knowing when to stop. Keep experimenting. Good luck. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment, question, or future video suggestion below. This has been a Fu Rancu. 
Video Production.